So we are studying six open prayers. There's no better prayer than the prayer taken directly from the Word of God. <laughs> I love the scriptural prayers. The prayers, because there's, there's meat behind them. There's power behind them. When we pray the Word, I'm believing that these six prayer keys will open the door a little bit wider to that awakening we're praying about. We will take our time. We will unlock each one. And I'm going to do a little bit of review real quick. First of all, open my mind, Lord. Somebody say it. Open my mind, Lord. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Some of you are so fun to talk to. <laughs> You're giving me your eyes. You're giving me, I mean, I just, I'm so, it's such a blessing to pastor this church. He opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. That's what we need. Do it this morning, God. Never open your Bible and just read. I really mean it when I say, let it read you. Because it's alive. God's word is alive. Honestly, there's a danger in just reading scripture. 2 Corinthians 3, 6, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. 1 Corinthians 8, 1, knowledge puffs up. <laughs> it's a real problem. It's this, it's this, it's, there's this constant drag in the church towards legalism, towards religion. And it's because knowledge puffs up. But love edifies. Always ask the Holy Spirit to meet you in the word. Say, open my mind, Lord. Would you say it? Open my mind, Lord. Secondly, secondly, it is what? Open my eyes, Lord. Psalm chapter 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. You know, if we are consumed with the wonders of God, then maybe the woes of this world have a lesser effect. I trust that. The woes that are happening all around us have a lesser effect when we're consumed with the wonder of God. Open my eyes, Lord, because God is at work all around you. You just need him to open your eyes to it. God's always working. God's always working. He's so good. It's so easy to see the bad. It's the lazy person that only sees the bad. Look for the good. Look for the good. Overcome evil with good. That's your job, Christian. In Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Overcome evil with good. I can't get that Old Testament history. That story. That his story. 2 Kings 6, 8. Write it down if you weren't here that week. When we went to 2 Kings chapter 6 and we looked at verses 8 through 23. And I can't get that out of my heart. If you missed it, write it down. 2 Kings chapter 6. Check it out later. Lord have mercy. It may look like I'm surrounded. But I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded by Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord, to the spiritual realm, even in this room. What's going on? What's going on in this room? Open my eyes. Elisha said it best. Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. When eyes were opened, behold, the mountains filled with horses and chariots of fire. Man, I believe in angelic work. And I believe that angels are among us all the time and we don't even know it. I know I sound crazy, but I love being crazy. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Does anybody believe that? I, I, I have an extra reason to believe that because my daddy got his miracle. I was specifically praying. I told y'all that they found cancer on my dad. And he had to go to surgery. I was down with him. I, I took a quick trip down to Southern Oregon this week and quick back. 
and w was there for the surgery. And, and I, the result is they went in, they got all the cancer, and there was none in the lymph nodes. Yes. None in the lymph nodes. And so they don't have to do chemo. They don't have to do radiation. This is exactly what I prayed for. This is, I th we threw in our mustard seeds and we said, Lord, make, be with those doctors. Be with those nurses. Make sure there's no more cancer in Jesus' name. We don't want any radiation. We don't want any chemo. And God heard and God answered. Isn't God good? I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. So today, we're going to zero in on open my eyes. Folks, you need to, we need our eyes open to the miracles all around us. If you're, if you're walking around like this all day, looking at all the sorrow, looking at all the pain, join with Milka. Start singing, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to all his miracles all around you. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 5. The Lord God has opened my ear. And I was not rebellious. Nor did I turn away. What's that word? What's that big R word? Rebellious. Open my ear, Lord, so that I can stop being rebellious. <laughs> we all do it. It's our natural bent. Surely from my mother's womb was I born into sin. I'm rebellious, God. So I need you to open my mind. I need you to open my eyes. I need you to open my ears, Lord. Let's go there. Isaiah chapter 50. It's so good. I want to make sure we get all the context of these scriptures. Grab your Bibles. Turn to Isaiah chapter 50. And once you found it, I'd love you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word this morning. If you can. If you can. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1. Thus says the Lord. <laughs> Where is the certificate of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? For your iniquities you have sold yourselves, and for your transgressions your mother has been put away. Verse 2, why when I came, was there no man? Why when I called, was there none to answer? Somebody get this in their spirit. Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Is my hand shortened at all? That, I can, that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? You may feel like you're divorced. You may feel put away. But hear God say to you this morning, is my hand too short to redeem? Can I not deliver? Don't trust those feelings anymore. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Have I no power to deliver? Indeed, with my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. Verse 3, I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. Oh, God, do it this morning. Redeem our tongues. A word in season to him who is weary. Lord, have mercy. If you're feeling weary this morning, receive a word. Receive a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear. Glory! He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. 
Verse 5, the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, my cheek to those who plucked out the beard. Anybody noticing a messianic prophecy? Thank you, Jesus. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my feet like a flint, like a hard rock, like a flint. And I know that I will not be ashamed. He is near. Come on, somebody say it. He is near who justifies me, who will contend with me. Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Oh, my goodness. Who is my adversary? Jesus said, love your enemy. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me. Surely the Lord God will help. Who is he who will condemn me? Indeed, they will all grow old like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Oh, we trust in the name of the Lord. We rely upon our God. Look, all you who kindle a fire, who encircle yourselves with sparks, Walk in the light of your fire and in the spark you have kindled. This you shall have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. God, this morning, your word is powerful. We do make fire. We do make sparks with our unruly tongues, with our rebellion, with our sin. Deliver us from our torment, O oh God. Mm. Redeem, oh God. Make some beauty from ashes this morning, oh God. Do the impossible today, oh God. Open our mind. Open our ears. Open our eyes. Have your way. You may be seated. Mm. I can't get over that last verse. People wonder why they're constantly surrounded by torment. You made the fire. You sparked it. Believe. Believe. And this can turn around. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to with that. <laughs> this messianic prophecy contains hot spots. I, I don't know if you noticed it, but I, I, Lord have mercy, Holy Spirit hot spots. Did anybody see the hot spots in, Saul, in Isaiah? We're not in Psalm, we're in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 50, there's hot spots where my Bible jumps off the page. Look at verse 2. Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Have I no power to deliver? Sometimes life is hard. We wonder why hasn't God delivered? Listen. He will redeem. Period. Begin to declare that when things don't make sense. Say, I know you're going to redeem this, God. You're going to redeem it. I know you will redeem this situation. Deliverance is around the corner. Wait on the Lord. If he is not quick to deliver, trust that, he is part, that this is part of his redemption plan. We are still in the gospel story. We are in the already and the not yet. It is finished. He is risen but his return is unknown. We're in the already, it is finished, and we're in the not yet, he's coming soon. He is coming soon. 
my, my mama and my daddy, I can't help but think about them because I spent some time with them this week. They used to sing, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. <laughs> I don't know where that other part came from. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. His hand isn't shortened. His power to deliver is still intact. You need to begin to declare the right kind of fire, not the strange fire. You need to begin to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, it makes me want to shout, holy, 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 when I think about the Lord. How he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he filled me to the uttermost. It makes me want to shout, holy, 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 glory, glory, glory. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, his hand is not shortened. His power to deliver is still intact. Maybe he wants to give us some time in the in-between to learn verse 4. When life hurts, maybe he's developing a word in season to they that are weary. Maybe you need that hot spot today. He awakens my ear. Lord, have mercy. I plead the blood of Jesus, a word in season to they that are weary. Before my daddy went into the surgery, my sister's really quiet and reserved. If you've met her, you never know what she really thinks. <laughs> That's not really true. My, my sister, she said, okay, people, we're going to pray, pray around my daddy before he goes back there. And the nurse stood by, and everybody else in the waiting there's a lot of people. With it, and we all gathered around my daddy, and I pleaded the blood of Jesus. We need to plead the blood of Jesus. We need to plead the blood of Jesus. I prayed over the doctors. I prayed over the nurses. Lord, get every, every ounce of that cancer out in Jesus' name. When Jesus gives you a word, hold on to it. One touch and everything changes. The nuggets he has given me when I'm in his presence. The downloads. It gets me through whatever. Whatever the world throws my way. I think of all the divine appointments. I think of all the holy moments. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When God gives you a word in season to they that are weary, hang on to it. There's a reason why I go back to words all the time. I keep them close. You gave me this word, God. I'm going to stand upon it today. Lord, open my mind, open my eyes, open my ears to holy moments, to divine appointments, to the word in season for the weary. Teach us how to speak, when to speak, if to speak. Put a word in season for the weary on our tongues. We are ready for that download, Holy Spirit. We're ready. Send an awakening. Verse 7, the Lord God will help. The Lord God will help. Our job is to be like Jesus and set our faces like flints. Like that hard rock. Stand strong in adversity. On the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I will not be moved. Hear me. Don't let the storm around you get inside you. That's how boats sink. 
Don't let the storm around you get inside you. Look to God for your help. Remember, Jesus slept through the storm. So take a good nap. He is my peace. Who has broken down every wall. He is my peace. Remember that old song? He is my peace. Who has broken down every wall. He is my peace. He is my peace. Cast all your care on him. For he cares for you. He is my peace. He is my peace. Hold on to that word. Hold on to that help. He is my peace. Verse 8, he is near. Mm. It's not just Christmas. It's not just Emmanuel, God is with us at Christmas time. It's all year long. He is near. He will help. I believe. I believe. Again, verse 9 proclaims, the Lord God will help me. There is no condemnation, only help. Trust in the name of the Lord. Rely upon the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Isaiah 50 gives me strength. Anybody else this morning? Has Isaiah 50 been strength to you this morning? Hold on to Isaiah chapter number 50. We're relying upon your word. We're feeding upon your word. On July 27th, 1879... Anybody remember that? 1879, Charles Spurgeon shared a sermon on Isaiah 50, focusing in on the Messianic prophecy. And he entitled it, The Shame and the Spitting. I hope that you will let just a little bit of this in your heart this morning. He says, our blessed Lord is well qualified to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Because he himself is lowly and meek and so accessible to us. Have you found that about? These, I feel so bad for these people who follow these religions where the God is far and the God is not near. The God is just something they throw prayers at far, far away, and they hope, maybe. You know what I'm talking about? I'm so thankful that he is near. He's so accessible to us. When men are in low spirits, they feel as if they could not take comfort from persons who are harsh and proud. The comforter must come as a sufferer. He must come in a lowly, broken spirit if he would cheer the afflicted. You must not put on your best dress to go and visit the daughter of poverty. Or go with your jewels about you to show how much better off than you are than she. Sit down by the side of the downcast man and let him know that you are meek and lowly of heart. Your master gave his back to the smiters. That's a picture right there. Your master gave his back to the smiters and his cheek to them that plucked off the hair. We just read it. And therefore, he is the comforter that you need. He is the comforter that you want. We mark not only his lowliness, his lowliness, but his sympathy. Are you full of aches and pains this morning? Who am I talking to? Are you full of aches and pains this morning? Jesus knows. God knows all about it. Jesus knows all about it. For he gave his back to the smiter. Do you suffer from what is worse than pain? From scandal? From slander? He did not hide his face from shame and spitting. Have you been ridiculed of late? Jesus can sympathize with you. In every pain that rings in your heart, your Lord 
has borne his share. Go and tell him. Many will not understand you. You are a speckled bird differing from all the rest. And they will all peck at you. Folks, sometimes we join the pecking. Stop joining the pecking. Jesus Christ knows this. He was a speckled bird too. Get you to him and he will sympathize with you. This is a picture of the world today. As a matter of fact, in in the angst around us, I heard a word from heaven, a very clear word from heaven. Jesus wasn't outraged by the sinner. He loved outrageously. I heard it as clear as I'm sitting here with you. Jesus was not outraged by the sinner. He Loved outrageously. Stop pecking. Church, Christian, stop pecking. Is anybody understanding what I'm talking about? In addition to his gentle spirit and his power to sympathize, there is this to help to comfort us, namely his example. For he can argue thus with you, I gave my back to the smiter. Cannot you do the like? Shall the disciple be above his master? If I can but get on the doorstep of heaven and sit down in the meanest place, there I shall feel I have an infinitely better position than I deserve. And I shall think of my dear blessed Lord and master giving his face to be spit upon and then giving, give myself airs. What? And say, I cannot bear this scorn. I cannot bear this pain. Some of us have done this this week. I can't bear this, Lord. I can't do this anymore, Lord. I can't, I can't, be, I can't do this. How many times have you done this this week? Am I talking to you? I can't bear this, Lord. When you're there, remember of how he was smitten upon, how he was plucked, how he was bruised. The pain that he endured for you and for me. Does the master bear the cross and must your shoulders never be galled? Did they call the master of the house Beelzebub and must they call you sir and ma'am? Did they laugh at him and scoff at him and must you be honored? Are you to be gentleman and lady where Christ was that fellow? For his birth, they loaned him a stable and for his burial, he borrowed a grave. Friends, let pride disappear. Let pride disappear. Let us count it our highest honor to be permitted to stoop low as ever we can. And then his example further comforts us by the fact that he was calm amid it all. Oh, the deep rest of the Savior's heart. They set him upon a mock throne, but he did not answer with an angry word. Jesus wasn't outraged. He loved outrageously. They put a reed in his hand, but he did not change it to an iron rod and break them like potter's vessels as he might have done. There was no wincing, no pleading for mercy. Yeah, there was sighs of pain. They were forced upon him. And he said, I thirst, for he was not a stoic, but there was no fear of man, no shrinking of heart. The king of martyrs well deserves to wear the martyr's crown, for right royally did he endure. There was never a patience like his. Patience. Patience. There's a reason why the Lord led me to share this with you. Patience. Patience. This is your copy. Christian, brother, sister, this is your copy. God loved. No, no. God so loved. God loved the righteous. No, no. God so loved the world. He 
God so loved the world. That person that's been driving you crazy, that political figure, that's been driving you crazy, that family member that's been driving you crazy, God so loved them. That boss, anybody, whoever you're having trouble loving, God, say it right now. God so loved and say their name. But maybe whisper it if they're next to you. <laughs> God so loved. God so loved. God so loved. Open my mind, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my ears, Lord.